This is T Fitz and I am back again. Y'all, man, I meant to get y'all a video out a couple of days ago. Uh, we ain't got time to go over here while I end, but I'll tell you this excuse like asshole. Everybody got one. Anyway, so I saw the other day, or you know, we've been talking, Bitcoin was daily bouncing off of that 21 EMA. Let's have a look. There it is. And I got the four hour up right here. We can go to the daily for days. Let me get it up. There it is. Bitcoin bounced for days off this 21 EMA. So you think maybe a good short term trade? Put one in there on the uh, around the 21 EMA. Let it go up. Take profit. Right? Yeah, you'd think that. But yesterday. Or was it the day before? I think it was yesterday. We broke that 21 EMA. And where do you think we bounced off of? Where do you think we found support at? Boom. Look at it. The 51 EMA. And it was only a matter of time till that 21 EMA was broken, in my opinion. Now, in this video, I was going to actually, I had planned to do a small video getting uh, you an introduction to trend lines. I was going to have a discussion about fundamental analysis versus technical analysis the good the bad and the ugly of them both and i was gonna like there's a whole lot to put in about like trend lines and different rules you got to have about them and how to redraw them and crap like that so that was the plan but then bitcoin goes and breaks the 21 ema now i do remember telling y'all we were probably going to see a significant correction. We did not hit the point of significant correction that I thought we were going to. If we look on the four hour, in my mind, we were going to hit around, I want to say, hell, did we? What is that? We came down to about 58,443. My prediction was we was going to hit about 58, not 58, 57, 881. So, we got off a little bit on that. There's that daggum timer I just set. I got a life hack that tells me, like I set a timer for 11 minutes, 11 seconds. When it goes off, I got to do whatever the heck I was going to do. Making this video is what I was going to do. So, there's when we had the ding. Regardless, on the four hour... You do see the cross of the 21 and the uh, 51 EMA, and that uh, 21 EMA looks like it's coming down to touch the 200 EMA. Now notice, on the 4 hour here, where are we finding support? You know, each one of these little candles, 4 hours, where is the support coming from? We had a crossing of the EMAs right in here. 51 and 21 and boom a decline broke through the 200 EMA on the 4 hour if y'all knew this you probably did the moving average or the exponential moving average is calculated based on the time frame you're looking at so here we're looking at a 200 EMA the pink line on the 4 hour so that's 200 different 4 hour segments now that's why on the daily when we go over here we look at it and we have not come close to the 200 ema anyway that's just in case you didn't know hell i didn't at one point but if you look on the four hour where we're finding resistance i said support we're finding resistance is breaking through the 200 ema now, like I told you, I was going to make a video about how to draw and redraw trend lines, tell you the importance of trend lines, and also speak to how that just you can't go off off all of that. I think one thing I can tell you, and we'll go ahead and do it real quick. Let's go to the four hour, and let me see if I can find a dang drawing tool. Here we go. Let me zoom it and get a little more data on here and scroll it over. You see these trend lines that are drawn off the daily. Let's just kind of start down here 
and run up through here. Now, of course, you know, hindsight is 2020. We'll also scroll back a little bit. We'll come off of. No, we're going to have to. That's going to be a hard one. Let's just go from here. Kind of get it. That gum. Give me a line. Here we go. I'm going to come up. I'm going to have my line touch. No, can't have that. That gum. Click. It's tough to get a trim line on the top of that one for there. You're kind of going to end up having to redraw it and kind of come more of a cross. Point being, the reason to have a trend line is to see when it's broken. So this bottom trend line that we just drew right here on the 4 hour, you'll see it come down and hit some support there a few times, and then boom, bouncing on and off of it right here, and then this red candle, if we zoom in, this red candle broke it then the next candle was below it that's a confirmation and then what happened boom went way down now all that being said i'm still going to put a video up for y'all about trend lines i kind of wanted to i mean there's going to be a whole series of these educational videos and that also brings up another point you get into looking at all this stuff and you feel a sense of urgency because you're like man what's going on i gotta make money now i gotta da 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 with all of this and this includes stocks anything else yes there may be a sense of urgency however i guarantee you there's always going to be something new coming up and there's always going to be an opportunity there for the person who knows how to see that opportunity before the opportunity arises. So, while I completely understand the sense of urgency to get the information into your head, and, you know, you start utilizing it, I also understand when you feel that sense of urgency, no, there's always going to be another shot. Bitcoin is, for my generation, it has been a once-in-a-lifetime thing. At the same time, it's still got momentum. It's still tradable. I don't know really what to say other than the whole time Bitcoin's been here, if you didn't get in early, 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 that's gone. So forget about it. There will be something else that comes up eventually. But that's the kind of stuff that you might call once in a lifetime. And, you know, that's like finding a freaking needle in a haystack. So that's not the kind of crap you want to count on. What you want to count on is learning how to read these charts. And knowing that no matter what kind is going on in the market, that you have an idea to be able to predict the next move and get in on it whether that's a short or a long or whatever something where you're going to be able to get in and get out with profit anyways i'm going to do my best to get that trend line video up to y'all the one after that will be explaining these emas or these moving averages and we'll go from there man uh heck dag gum I don't know if I told y'all, but I totally saw that, that Bitcoin was going to end up breaking that 21 AMA, and I did tell y'all I was a few hundred dollars off on my estimate. Dang. Shit happens. If anybody disagrees with uh, my thoughts on these upcoming videos, please let me know. I'm going to do my best to pump them out as quick as I can. I got a whole, whole bunch of crap going in life right now, which... I mean, no, nobody gives a crap about that but me and the people that are fucking asking me to do it, right? And I got a freaking obligation to you fellas. Is there a daggum female term for fellas? Fell lady? There's about 1.2% of y'all females and I don't want to exclude you. Anyways, there's what's going on with Bitcoin today. In my opinion, and it is just my opinion and not.
financial advice, I'm gonna look at the daily. If I this dead gum son, where's the daily? Ah, found it. All right, scroll into view. Get some more days in the picture. On the daily, if you'll notice, we are catching support on the 51 EMA. Now you can draw 50, you can draw whatever. Like I said, on this one, this is a moving average of what's happened over the last 51 days because we're on the daily. Are we going to continue catching support on the 51 EMA? It's kind of looking like it. What kind of... We scroll in today. We ain't even really got a daggone candle. And it's not hitting me what you call one of those. It looks like a hammer. Like with a little bitty candle and big old wicks. Dang, I should know that off the top of my head. Hold on. It's a hammer or something. Yeah, it is a hammer when it looks like what we just looked at. And for a hammer, you got to know that it typically occurs after a price decline. They have a small real body. That's where you actually see the, the fat part of it, you know, where it's not the wicks. And it typically occurs when sellers enter the market during a price decline. And by the time of close, the buyers end up absorbing the selling pressure that was there and push the market price near the opening price. See, the close there can be above or below the opening price, although the close should be near the open in order for the real body of the candlestick to remain small. What we had was maybe not exactly a hammer, but that gun close to it. Let's look. Yeah, I mean, that's close to a hammer. Otherwise, it's going to be, what do they call it, a spinning top? If you don't have this one in your vernacular, let's go over it. Alright, that spinning top, which maybe we're looking a little closer to, has a candlestick pattern. It has a real short body. That's the fat part. That's vertically centered among the wicks, right? So, I'll get y'all, oh, well, heck, we can just look at the daggum thing and see. I'll show you. So, right here. You see how this uh, this little fat part of this sucker that my line's over, which would be the previous one, this, you know, the fat part. If that was down, more around in the middle, which it kind of is, getting close to it, right? Spinning top. What's that tell us? Well, that's when buyers end up kind of pushing the price up during any sort of time period. And then the sellers, they're pushing the price down during the same daggone time period but ultimately the closing price ends up very close to the opening price and i believe that kind of indicates indecision but let's make sure so after a strong price advance or decline spinning tops can signal a potential price reversal if the candle that follows gives you a confirmation Spinning top can have a close above or below the open, but the two prices are always very close together. Takeaways from the spinning top. Sharp pattern, whatever. Like I said, it's a candlestick with that, you know, a real short body, long wicks. The fat part of the body is kind of going to be around in the middle. And since buyers and sellers both push the price you know what i'm saying but neither one could really maintain the momentum they were getting the pattern shows indecision so take that for what you will because it is what it is y'all know i love each and every one of you there was some other crap i wanted to say at the end of these videos but i can't remember it However, if you'd like to hit that like button, I'd appreciate it, or that dislike, leave me a comment and subscribe, people. Man, much love. T-Fits, and I'm out.